What's up everybody, Bumpkin here. So we got a few more cards today. Uh, we're doing today's reveals and yesterday reveals. We're gonna go over all the cards. Uh, let's get right into it. So our first card is four provisions, four strength. Whenever you play a crime card, damage a random enemy unit by one. Bonded, increase the damage by one. So bonded, the way it works, uh, if you have one of these on the board already, so if you have a set of two, uh, the bonded increases the damage. It does not increase if you have more than one. So if you only have one of these on the board, or if you have two of these on the board, uh, they do two damage per ping. If you have three of these on the board, uh, they each still ping for two. They don't increase to three damage. Um, at least that's not how it currently works. I guess they could change that. But uh, as of now, they ping for a maximum of two damage apiece. <clears throat> so this card's really, really good with Portal. Uh, you play Portal, you pull out two of these, you immediately get the Bonded, and every crime you play, uh, assuming your opponent doesn't remove the card, you start pinging for two damage. Is that good? Yeah. That's pretty good. Per? That's four extra damage for every crime card you play. Uh, <laughs> you have to remove one of these. If you don't remove one of these, you're taking four every turn. Well, for ev however many crime cards they have. Um... So if you remove one of these, the damage goes from four a crime card down to one a crime card. So if you do remove one, you're, you're in a pretty good spot. Uh, taking one per crime is okay. It's, it's not the end of the world. Uh, they're probably playing maybe four or five crimes max. It's, it's still pretty good. I mean, if they're playing four crimes. Uh, it's still an eight for four, which is still nuts. Um, but you don't just lose the game. Uh, and you're probably going to have to use removal on different engines. So yeah, this card's really good. Would you play this outside of a deck that runs Portal for exactly this combo? Eh. If you're running a lot of crime, sure. But you, if you're playing this card, you're probably playing Portal because it's just, it's really good. Um, yeah, it's a good card. Uh, you'll run it with Portal. You will see people playing Portal with two of these because the payoff is quite significant. Uh, and there's another card that can uh, synergize with this that we'll get to in a bit. But uh, yeah, good card. Moving along, we have a 7 provision card, 4 strength, deploy boost all allied witcher hunters by 1, tribute 3, boost all allied witcher hunters in hand, deck, and on battlefield by 1. So if you pay an extra 3, you get to boost uh, all the other witcher hunt or sorry, not witcher hunters, witch hunters uh, in your hand and in your deck. So how many witch hunters are there? Uh, I'm not actually sure, but if you want this card to break even, you need to have 3 witch hunters on the board. Uh, that's actually pretty hard, I would imagine, unless your entire deck is Witch Hunters, but I'm pretty sure there are not that many. Uh, there's probably between, like, four and eight, I'd say. Uh, so if you're running four, this card is bad. If you're running eight, let's say you can have... Let's say you run eight Witch Hunters. Yeah, okay. If you can run eight and you are good at the game and draw this in round one, it's pretty good because Carryover is a very strong mechanic. Um, yeah, the problem is, like... Let's say most of those cards are 4 or 5p. Typically, you probably mulligan those cards in round 3. Uh, you typically do not keep 4 provision cards in round 3. So boosting a 4 provision card in your deck is kind of bad. Um, so unless there's some witch hunters that are high provisions, like 6 plus at the very lowest, uh, I don't think this card will see much play. Uh, maybe in the future. Maybe in the future we get like 6 no more witch hunters. And then this card's playable. Uh, but if there aren't very many Witch Hunters, then it's not worth running because the carryover is not worth it. And the other issue with this card is if you don't draw it in round one, it's pretty bad. Because, like, you, you typically want to play this for the carryover. And if you're playing it in round three, it's just bad. So, yeah. Eh, might see a little bit of play. Um, but it's not going to make an entire archetype by itself. Yeah, it's, it, it's okay. It's all right. We won't see much play. Moving along, this card's going to see a lot of play. Uh, 12 provisions, 4 strength. This is this is a pretty sizable card. Uh, intimidate. Intimidate means um, whenever you play a crime card, boost self by 1. Profit, 4. So you get 4 coins on play. For every unique gang category in your starting deck, increase his initial profit by 1. So there are up to 5 gangs. Uh, you can get this up to profit 9. That's a lot. Profit 9, assuming you meet the condition, which you can do so beforehand, before you get into the game. Uh, this is a 13 for 9. Is that good? Or Sorry, not 13 for 9. 13 for 12. Uh, is the 13 for 12 good? Yes, of course that's good. Um, not to mention, it's also an engine, right? So 13 for 12, and it's an engine that's going to be getting anywhere between 
like one in four points throughout the round because of the other crime cards in your hand. Uh, so yeah, this card's great. Um, not to mention, if you play horde cards, right, like Flying Redanian, this card automatically triggers it, right? <clears throat> Before we had a leader that gave you nine coins. Well, this gives you nine coins too. So let's say you play around one out. You play a few crime cards. You pull out Flying Redanian because you hit Horde nine. You can use this in round two to bleed your opponent. You just smash this on turn one in round two, and you pull out Flying Redanian again, and you have nine coins. That's crazy. This card's really good. Um, is this card auto-included in every deck? It's really good. Uh, the only reason it would not be auto-included is if it's difficult to get five of each unique category in your deck. If it's like... I don't know, let's say each of the five are 10 provisions each and it really skews your deck and makes your deck bad, then I guess this card is not as good uh, because it makes the rest of your deck worse. But assuming you can find one like average card for each gang, this card's really good. Um, yeah, I haven't actually looked at all the gang cards, but I'm assuming <laughs> most of the cards in this faction are just good. I mean, most of the four provision cards are playable. Uh, yeah, Syndicate has a lot of good cards or just like average cards. So yeah, this card's very good. Uh, auto include, once again, depends on the gangs. But uh, yeah, <laughs> you're going to see this card a lot. It's very strong. Moving along, we have an engine, five provisions, four strength, range, every ally turn on turn end, gain one coin. Um, so if you play this, immediately you break even at five for five. Um, yeah, it's a fair engine. Uh, it's very similar to Trebuchet in Northern Realms or Pikeman in uh, Nilfgaard. Uh, they're both row locked, or I guess all three of these are row locked, uh, and they generate one point a turn, uh, except this is uh, coins instead of uh, damage. So it's, it's a tiny bit better because it doesn't require your opponent to have a unit on that opposite row. So it's, it, it's a tiny bit better. Um, do those cards see play? Yeah, Pikeman sees play. Trebuchet sees play, depending on the deck. Um, every now and then, some people don't play Trebuchet. Uh, I, I, it's probably just because the other there, there's a few 5Ps that are a little better. Um, so yeah, if you need a 5P slot and you're looking for something, this card's good. It's just good enough. Um, the only reason this card would be bad is if everyone's playing like Dragoons and Squayatel, uh, and everyone's and like the entire meta is Squayatel. Then this card's kind of meh, but you do have other engines that are Rolox. So I mean, if this gets moved, it means one of your, your other engines don't get moved. So yeah, it'll see play. Is it auto-include? Maybe. It's actually, it's, yeah, I, I mean, I think it's pretty good. Pikeman is in most Nilfgaard lists, and this is just as good in a deck that has more engines than Nilfgaard. Yeah, I think this card's good. The only reason it wouldn't be auto-include is a very specific deck doesn't need the coins, uh, maybe like a swarm type of deck, or there are other 5P cards that are more important for that very specific deck. Uh, otherwise, yeah, this card's going to see play. It's a good card. Moving along, we have a four provision card, three strength, deploy, give poison to a unit if it's an ally, gain two coins. This is like insane power creep on Squatel poison cards, but you know, whatever. It's syndicate, so who cares? Uh, <laughs> I would love if the Squatel cards were 4P and did this. Oh, it'd be so great. Anyways, um, give a unit poison if it's an ally, gain two coins. So there's an engine we discussed in an earlier video. It's four provisions, four strength. If this unit's poison, gain one. So this card synergizes with that if you really want to. I don't know how good that kind of deck will be, but I guess it's okay. Um, yeah, I mean, if you want to play a poison deck, you're going to be playing every poison card available, and this is a card that does poison. Is poison a strong mechanic? No, not really. Uh, we've tested with Squayatel. It's pretty bad. We've done it with Nilfgaard. It's pretty bad. It's too, it's too gimmicky, uh, unless the meta is all super tall, like poison just isn't that good. Um, granted, the stats are much better than all the Squayatel poison cards, but is it enough to carry? I don't think so. Um, so yeah, yeah you, it's actually a fair card. If you poison like a cow or like a Jermaine cow or like a two point card, um, it's a five for four, which is okay. I mean, you could just play this as a five for four like 90% of the time. And then if you draw both of these in round one and you win coin flip, you can use it offensively as poison. That actually sounds pretty good now that I think about it. Huh. Huh. It'd be like if the Squayatel Dryad, the three strength one that gives poison, um, if that card was allowed to poison one of your own cards and give like plus three, would I play that card? Yeah, I'd play that card. Because I mean, poison doesn't brick. 
In this case, poison can't really break. Yeah, actually, now that I think about it a little more, yeah, I, I actually don't mind playing this. Because it's a 5 for 4, which is what you're going to get out of any other 4 provision card. And if you draw the pair, you draw both in your opening hand, and you win coin flip, even if you don't win coin flip, poisoning two units in round one is quite good. Uh, yeah, if you just draw both of these, cool. You just keep them. They're great. Uh, actually, I, I do think this card will see play because there's no downside. Huh. Okay, this card's good. <laughs> I've convinced myself the poison mechanic isn't great, but this card is so well statted that it doesn't matter, right? The, the fact that you have another thing to do if you're not poisoning one of your own your opponent's cards is insane i i feel like the square one should do the same thing because like all of a sudden this poison card is great yeah okay never mind i changed my mind this card's great um i will definitely be playing this card the only reason you don't play this card is if you're playing like a portal deck with this card and you don't have room for other fours because you're not allowed to run other four units because it kind of messes up the combo uh, otherwise yeah i think this card's actually good It's a good card. Moving along, we have another poison card. Uh, this card I don't think is good. It's four provisions. Uh, profit three, poison a unit. Eh, I mean... I I think all-out poison is honestly a trap. I don't think this card's good. The The only exception would be we're in a super tall meta and, like, everyone's playing monsters with spear tips or, like, SK with priests and, like, Olaf. Then, yeah, I guess poison's good. Otherwise... Yeah, I don't think so. Maybe if you're running two of these and you really love poison, you could run a one of copy of this. Um, I guess it's so. Yeah, no, I, I don't think you're gonna play this card. Obviously, if you're playing a heavy poison deck and you like the poison mechanic, you're gonna play this card because it has the word poison on it. Otherwise, yeah, you probably aren't gonna play it. Moving along, so this is the card that I was talking about earlier that uh, synergizes with the four point uh, lackey. So intimidate. Once again, whenever you play a crime card, get plus one. Deploy transform adjacent unit into a cut-up lackey. Uh, the cut-up lackey is this unit right here. Um, tribute three. So if you spend three coins, transform adjacent units into cut-up lackeys instead. So if you play this and you pay the tribute three uh, and you transform two units, uh, they automatically have the bonded. And now every time you play a crime card, not only does this get plus one, but you ping... Uh, two sets of two damage with your, your lackeys. Is that good? Yeah, that's really good. Um, you could play this card and the lackeys with portal, and the idea would be you play portal, you pull out the lackeys. If your opponent removes one, it's not a big deal because you can play this and just spawn two more. Uh, and then they have to remove two lackeys, and that's that's hard. I mean, yeah. It's, it's, it's an expensive card. It is 10 provisions for uh, a six. Um, granted, you could be getting extra value just like a slave infantry. If you transform a two into a four, you get plus two. If you transform a one into a four, you get plus three. Um, so you actually break even if you can transform two twos. Um, well, okay, no, that's not including the tribute three. Okay, yeah, so you're going to have to be utilizing... Okay, if you transform a one into a four... It breaks. Eh, it's one under. It's, uh, what is it? 12 or 13. Okay. So if you play Jermaine and you play this and you play the, uh, you pop the tribute three and you transform cows, you're almost breaking even. But the idea is you follow this up with some kind cards and you start smashing your opponent's board, right? Once again, every time you play a crime card and you have two of these on the board, uh, each of them pings for two damage. That's a lot of damage. That's, that's four points for every crime card you play, not to mention the plus one on this. So you're getting five points every time you play a crime card. That's crazy. So if you play this, uh, even if you transform a four into a four, right? you pay the tribute three. It's costing you roughly 13. It's a six. If you play one crime card, you get to 11 for 13. Right, so you almost break even for worst case scenario of transforming two fours into a four. If you transform two uh, two threes into fours, you're you're breaking even immediately. Not to mention, if you play more than one crime card, you're going way above. So yeah, this this card's good. Um, the only way this card is bad is in a super aggress or I guess a super removal meta where everyone's playing ethne and everybody's removing everything, uh, and you never have any units on the board. And then when you play this, it doesn't actually transform anything because you don't have any units. Uh, Eh, I mean, we've seen metas like that. Maybe that meta will happen. We'll see. Um, 
But yeah, assuming that's not the meta, yeah, I, I think this card will see play along with the other lackeys. Uh, you don't even have to play portal lackeys. You can just play the two lackeys with this card. The idea is you transform two units into lackeys. If your opponent removes one, it's not a big deal because you just play another lackey from hand. So yeah, I think it's a good card. I like it a lot, actually. Uh, you get It's like a drog. Yeah, it's like a drog, except you play it really early. Yeah, it's cool. I like the card. Moving along. 10 provisions, 6 strength, insanity. For those of you who don't remember what insanity is, um, insanity cards typically are always have fee costs. Now, if you cannot pay the fee cost, right? So let's say you play this card. Uh, normally, you would have 5 coins to proc it. But let's say you don't have 5 coins. Let's say you only have 2 coins. Uh, you pay insanity. Insanity, uh, the card takes damage equal to the fee that you would normally have to spend. So in this case, if you play this card and you do not have five coins, uh, you will take five damage uh, and then the effect will go off, uh, which is spawn a base copy of a bronze allied unit and summon it to Igor's row. Okay, so if you play this card for 10 provisions and you, you, you don't have the fee, and you ping it down to one strength, you get to copy a unit. Maybe you copy another lackey. Um, but as I don't think the lackey stack, you, you, that spawn needs to be worth roughly nine provisions. Uh, <laughs> maybe. That, that's that's really expensive. You, you, nine provisions to make a copy of a bronze. I mean, I guess if you get another lackey and your opponent can't remove it and, like, you have eight more crimes in your hand or something and it gets crazy. Eh, I, I, I'm honestly not seeing it. Maybe there's another bronze that's going to be coming out later that makes this card better. But otherwise, it's really expensive. Um, there's a cute combo. You can play this with Sakras. Um, Sakras makes it so that you're, the, the unit to his, what, to his left does not take damage so if you play this next to Sakras, then you can proc it and in theory you can go infinite right because he never takes damage except not really because the way that it's made is uh when you uh summon a unit it summons to the right so i'm assuming it summons to the right of igor uh, and if it summons to the right of igor then it's blocking um Sakras. however if it summons to the far end of the row like all the way to the right well then i guess you can go infinite well as many units as you can fit on the row um is that combo good eh, it's not great maybe 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 it's okay uh but i'm pretty sure the summon goes to the right of igor right if you play germain the cows don't go to the far ends of the row they just come out of germain so i would assume the same happens for this in which case you can't go infinite which means yeah i'm not seeing it the other combo that you can think of is you play this card you don't proc the fee and then the next turn you proc the fee or not the fee you proc it with insanity it goes to one strength and then you use tatterwing tatterwing is eight provision six strength consume a unit uh, and boost self by base uh, so the idea would be this is at one strength when you consume it it's at six strength um so you get plus five on tatterwing that's kind of a neat combo, I guess. The problem with that combo is, well, it's a little gimmicky. Like, what if you play this and your opponent locks it? What if you play this and you do use the insanity and your opponent pings it off? What if, right? A lot, a lot of what ifs and the the payoff probably. I, I don't know. I just, I just don't see it. It's just maybe there's some crazy bronze combo where having more is better. In which case, I guess this card's okay. But uh, I just, I'm just not seeing it. It's really expensive. Yeah, I just I don't see it. Moving along, um, yeah, this is a card that probably shouldn't have been printed. Yeah, okay. Well, five provisions. It's a crime card. Damage an enemy unit by a random amount between one and ten. Yeah. Well, that's a very large <laughs> cap. All right. So a very similar card to this is Gascon. Uh, Gascon is seven, eight provisions. Is he eight provisions? He's seven provisions. I'm actually blanking. I think he's eight. Um, he, he, he's on the more expensive side. Um, he's a little better in that he boosts, right? Like, let's say you're trying to kill a three point engine. This does send damage. Like you're over killing it by seven. Uh, so Gascon's a little better. Eh, kind of. He's still pretty expensive. Whereas this card is very cheap. Five provisions for a potential engine removal, right? The idea is like your opponent plays botchling and you're just, all right, I'm going to play this roll the 50, 50, try to kill the botchling if you miss 
you're going to be pretty sad because that botchling is going to heal for free. So are you, are you willing to take that risk? Maybe, if you're feeling lucky. Um, yeah. O originally, I think this card was six provisions. The fact that it's five provisions means people will play this because it's cheap. Five provisions is for potential 10. I mean, granted, the odds of rolling 10 is not very high. But any rolling anything over five is just good. I mean... Even rolling a five is good. So any, any, rolling anything over a four is good. So yeah, I, I do think this card will see play. And I'm a little concerned about that. All right, let's say you're playing monsters and you play a spear tip and your opponent plays this and it rolls a 10. You're going to be mad. Now on the flip side, if your opponent plays an Arbalist and you play this and you ping it for one, you're going to be mad. Um, somebody's going to be unhappy. Uh, a, a good amount of times unless they play an arbalist and you do like seven damage to it or whatever and it's like okay i guess that's fair you played a 5p card to remove my my 5p engine i guess that's fair um but like if this removes a botchling your opponent's going to be salty so yeah not not a huge fan of this the variance is all over the place um I'm okay with them printing these types of cards if they're overcosted, because the idea is like with Gascon, like I play Gascon every now and then just as a meme. Uh, it's high variance. It rolls an 11, my chat freaks out. It rolls a one, my chat freaks out. I don't care either way because I'm just looking to have fun. Uh, either way, it's a meme, whatever. Whereas this card, <sighs> this might actually see competitive play and that's scary. So uh, I, I guess we hope for a nerf in the future so that it's not playable. Yeah. It is a good card, though. Uh, this card is a dual card with monsters. This is the dual epic. Seven provisions, ten strength. Deploy damage to a random allied unit by three. If there are no allies, damage self by five instead. So the idea is when you play this card, you obviously want a unit on the board. In theory, I guess if you want, you could play this with no units and then Tatterwing it once again because it takes the base uh, and it doesn't care about the damage. Granted, you now have a 16-point Tatterwing on the board that's super susceptible to tall removal. So do you really want to do that? Probably not. Um, but you could if you wanted to. So the idea is um, you play this and you kill something. So, okay, we can start running through all the options. Uh, Gurnacora, you spawn a fruit, you play this, it's a 10. Well, I guess it's a nine because you killed a fruit. So it's a nine for seven. Is a nine for seven good? Yep, that's good. Uh, you play this on an Arrakis Queen drone. Cool, it's even better. It's a 10. It's a 10 for seven because the Arrakis drone uh, respawns. Um, you can play this with Ancient Foglet. You can play this with Regular Foglet. You can play this with Harpy Egg. You can play this with any Death Wish card because, yeah, it just procs it, and it's good. Um, you can play this in Syndicate and play it with the new Five Provision Dwarf that has a shield. The idea is you play the card with the shield. You play this, it pings the unit for zero, and you just play this 10 for 7. And a 10 for 7 is really good. So, yeah, this card's great. Uh, this card's going to see a lot of play. Like, auto-include play in monsters. Uh, the exception would be, obviously, if, I don't know, you're playing Woodland and you're not playing any of those Death Wish cards. Which would be very surprising, because most of any monster decks run Harpy, Foglet. Uh, I guess not all run. They run both Foglets, Ancient and Regular, and then some run Harpy. I typically, maybe like a one of for a uh, Cyclops or for a uh, Solano Harpy. So yeah, this card's great. Very strong card. Looking forward to playing this in Monsters. It's just a high value card. Uh, obviously, it sucks in a short round if you draw this plus like a spear, like two spear tips or something. Uh, then this card's pretty mediocre. But if you're playing Gurney, that's not really an issue. Yeah, good card. Very strong card. Moving right along, we have <laughs> 10 provisions, 3 strength, deploy, spend a number of crowns equal to an enemy's unit's power, and then seize it. So it's similar to Sweers, except. The reach is up to nine, right? Up to nine coins that you can have. Nine is the cap. Is this card good? Um, I've actually had some discussions with other people. I, I was talking to uh, Shinmiri earlier today on stream. He doesn't think this card is very good. Um, now, if you do the math on it, yeah, it's actually not that good, right? Like, let's say you steal a botchling at five. You're spending five coins, so it's roughly 15 provisions. Uh, and you're getting a 13-point swing. And... Yeah, that's not... I mean... <laughs> in that case right there, it's actually good. Because you're sealing a botchling. And this is why I, I think this card is better than most people think. Uh, you don't lock the engine, unlike Muzzle. You get to steal the engine, you get to keep the engine, and then you get to utilize the engine. Um, granted, not all engines can be utilized by all factions, but in the case of like a botchling, this card's insane. It's a Muzzle, except better. Um, 
So yeah, I think this card is great. With the condition that we're not in a control meta. In a control meta, this card is not good. Because, as I said, it you're, you're, you're going to be losing value. If you steal a 9, you're getting, what, 12 for 10? Because you're, you're taking a 9, it's 18, it's 21, but you're spending 9. It's 19, yeah. Mm. If you steal a 9, but granted, you have to have 9 coins to do that, and your opponent has to play a 9, which isn't very likely unless they're playing monsters. Or they are... SK and they have the priest. I, I honestly think this card is good. Um, here, here's the easy way to tell whether or not this card is good. Is muzzle good in the meta? If the answer to that question is yes, then I think this card is good. If the answer to that question is no, then I don't think this card is good. It's that simple. Um, and I think a lot of people are going to be playing Syndicate day one. Uh, and probably a lot of people are going to be playing engines. So stealing engines is good, especially because you're also playing syndicate. So you can also utilize the engine. Uh, I don't know. You steal a flying Redanian and you're in a really good spot, right? If you have two flying Redanians in your deck and you play that new card that gets you nine crowns, you get eight points of carryover. That's really, really good. Um, I think this card is good. Some people disagree. Um, in a control meta, I, I will agree that this card is not good. Um, but in a meta where people are playing engines. Um, yeah, I, I think this card will see play because it's a muzzle on a body and it has flexibility. And I think that's strong. And it's a way to blow your crowns. Um, right? Like, do, do you really care if you blow five crowns at once to seal a five? No, not really, because the whole point of coins are to spend them, right? You gain coins so that you can later spend them. Um, and this is a decent way to spend them, especially if you're stealing an engine. So once again, is muzzle seeing play, then this card is good. Otherwise, not good. And I, But here's the thing. I do think muzzle will be good next patch. So I would be very surprised if we did not see this card see play next patch. So I am looking forward personally to playing this card. Moving on, we have Witch Hunters. Uh, this card used to be in Northern Realms uh, several months ago. This card's four provisions, four strength. Uh, deploy, place a bounty on an enemy unit. So bounty mechanic, um, with the upcoming leader that I'm going to show in a bit, yeah, bounty might actually be pretty decent. Um, Shinmiri was saying maybe the best kind of syndicate list will be something along the lines of bounty plus lots of removal. And yeah, I mean, I don't know, we'll phrase it like this. Would you play an ethne deck where you get extra payoff for killing extra things? Yes. Yes, you would. Um... Granted, I don't think Syndicate has as much removal as Scoia'tael does, so I don't think it's going to be as effective as Scoia'tael in terms of removing things. Um, but if it can do it decently enough with the extra payoff of Bounty, yeah, I could see it. Maybe maybe like a mid-range removal Syndicate deck is good. Who knows? Um, in which case, this card's very good. It's a 4 for 4, which is uh, one point below value. Granted, if you're killing units anyways and you're placing Bounties on them, uh, you're getting free points, and that's good. Uh, once again, if you forgot how Bounty works, the idea is it's a status. You put it on one of your uh, opponent's cards. And if you kill that card, you get coins equal to the strength of that card. So if you put this on a Morkvark and you kill the Morkvark, you get five coins. Is that good? Well, if you're going to kill the Morkvark anyways, yeah, free five points. Why not? Uh, will this card see play? Yeah, I do think it will see play in any kind of control deck. Um, will there be a super heavy Bounty deck? Maybe, but the stats on this are good enough that it will see play. If this card was three strength, I don't think it would see much play, but because it is four strength, um, which is eh, slightly below average, right? The the typical four is five strength, or typical four provision card is five strength. This is only four, but assuming you are playing removal, you should be able to get the bounty off, in which case this card will be easily breaking even. Our next card, six provisions, four strength. Whenever you gain crowns, boost self by one. Um, this card's overcosted by one. If this card was five provisions, it would see play as uh, six provisions. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I guess you could throw it into a super heavy engine deck and like, I guess, like you throw this with the earlier card that we mentioned, the five provision, four strength card that gets plus one crown a turn. I guess if you played two of these and then you had one of these on the board, you get plus two a turn. Is that good? Yeah, I get that. It's pretty good. You get six immediately and you're threatening to get more points. Um, So yeah, maybe in a super, super heavy engine deck, this card would see a lot of play. Um, 
the idea being once again your opponent can only remove so many engines so yeah this card might see a tiny bit of play uh by no means auto include if this was five provisions this card would see a lot of play six provisions i think people will skip over this when they're building their decks unless once again they are playing a very very heavy engine removal deck yeah it's it's it's, it's okay where's my leader oh our last card our leader so yeah um pretty pretty uh brutal image there's actually a, another one where there's a bunch of other people lying in the the pool of blood or grape juice or whatever you want to call it um you can go find that one on the internet if you'd like i decided to do this one just because eh, there might be some uh, younger people watching this video anyways 16 provisions order damage an enemy unit by seven then gain crowns equal to any excess damage dealt uh so it's like ada except always better um because when you, you you don't use Ada to remove engines, you use it val for value on the largest unit for Hubert. Whereas this card, you can actually use it for removal. Um, if your opponent has a five point botchling, you need to kill it. You play this, kill it. Assuming you don't have like muzzle or the other steel card that we just went over. Um, yeah, it's removal on a body and over killing doesn't feel bad because you get crowns. I think this card works super well with bounty. Right, if you if you can find a seven point unit on your opponent's side of the board, uh, and you place a bounty on it, and then immediately play this, uh, this does seven damage, and then you get seven coins. That's really good. That that that's that's very strong. Um, yeah, I think if you're gonna play a bounty deck, you are one hundred percent playing this card, uh, unless you're playing cleaver with like muzzle or shoop or something else that you, whatever. Um, but yeah, I, I think this leader works very well in some kind of like mid range bounty deck. Um, would you play this in any syndicate list? Eh. If you really need the removal. If you really need the removal and you can't run the removal in your deck naturally, then yeah, sure. The always on hand removal is quite nice. So, um, But I, I think, once again, it'll do better in some kind of bounty removal deck. Yeah. Strong card. Um, I'm kind of curious what the in-game model is going to look like, considering this card, he's not really wearing anything but uh i don't know maybe he has some cloth down there i guess we'll have to wait and see hope you guys enjoyed the video let me know what you guys think about the cards and i'll see you guys on the next one